All right, today we're going to work with linear equations, finding the equation of the line. So we do work with slope. So our idea with slope was that we kind of recognize when something has a positive slope or a negative slope or zero because it's horizontal. We, in our mind, we can see what that looks like. So now we're going to work with actually finding an equation of a line. And so to find our equation of a line, We're going to use point slope form. Okay, so we'll use the point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So the point slope form just means that we actually need a point and a slope to find that equation. We need the point and a slope to find the equation. If we have those two things, we can find it. Now, you've seen some other uh, equation writing. This is what we're going to use to find. You've seen this. You've seen slope-intercept. We talked about that. Y equals mx plus b. And you've even seen what we call a standard form in the past, which would be ax plus by equals c. And the standard form was just where x and y are on the same side. Okay, sometimes we saw things solved for y. Sometimes we saw them with x and y on the same side. It really doesn't matter. There's different forms. Okay. Sometimes I'm going to be asked to write an answer in slope-intercept. Sometimes I'm going to be asked to write an answer in standard form. But no matter what, I'm going to start with the point slope form, that's how I'm going to find the equation of the line every single time. Which means I need a point and a slope. So if I'm asked to find an equation of a line with a slope of 2, and we'll say through 5, 3. So I've got some line going through 5, 3. And you can visualize where 5, 3 is on a graph. You can also now visualize what a slope of 2 looks like. You know what's going on. So we have that general idea. We don't need to graph it, but we can figure out the equation. I'm going to start with my point slope form. There's my general point slope form, which means I need a point and a slope. I'm going to have y minus 3. There's my y1, my y value, 2 my slope, and then phi is my x value, x minus phi. So I need to get my x value, my y value, x1, y1 is the point, similar to when you were finding the slope. I've got a slope of 2. Now that's actually a linear equation. There is nothing wrong with that answer. What we do have to be able to do is work with some different forms. So. If I'm asked to write an answer in slope-intercept, so this is good, we've got our equation. If I distribute the 2, 2x minus 10, and then y would be 2x minus 7 when I add 3 to both sides. There's a y-intercept form. I want to stress that either one of those forms are correct, it just depends on what the directions are asking you for. If they ask you for slope-intercept, then we've got to go through and get y equals. If you're asked to get x and y on the same side, I can bring this 2x over, and I would have negative 2x plus y equals negative 7. Here's another form. I can even distribute the negative. 2x minus y equals 7. Any of those forms are correct. The simplified form depends on what you're asked for. So if I'm asked to write something in slope-intercept, of course I'm going to get y equals, but if I'm not asked to do any particular form, I'm probably going to stick with that guy and just leave it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? But what I do need to realize is, let's say I'm checking an answer key for my work, whether it's back of the book or an answer key you're given. And you've got this, 
and you look at the answer key and it's got this one. Well, we have to understand how to get from here to here. We just distribute and move things around. Nice thing is that's not new. So we're sticking with that point slope form. Let's say M is negative five. We're gonna go through negative one, two. So once again, I'm gonna start right with my point slope form. I'm gonna get that just kind of ingrained in my mind. I need Y minus Y one, M, X minus X one. So I'm going to start with y minus 2, negative 5, x plus 1. Now, on that right side, why did it change to x plus 1? What do you think? Yeah. Double negative. Yeah, I have minus a negative. So we've got to watch our signs. If it's minus a negative 1, that's plus 1. So we take care of our signs. So there's that point slope form. Let's look at some others. I would distribute the negative 5. So y minus 2, negative 5x minus 5. We know our distributive property. Move my 2 over. y is negative 5x minus 3. There's that slope intercept form. And again, a lot of it's just getting comfortable with the different forms. I can bring the 5x over. 5x plus y is negative 3. Any of the forms are correct. We just want to be comfortable no matter what. No matter what you're asked for, here's how I'm starting every time. Right with that point slope. So, what if we did something like this? What if I said through... Uh, let's go negative 2, negative 3, and 4, 0. So the previous two problems, I gave you a slope and a point. Now all of a sudden you're given two points. For me to find an equation of a line, I'm still going to start with this point slope form. That point slope form tells me I need both a point and a slope. I don't have a slope. How do we come up with the slope, though? If you know two points, how do you get the slope? Don't overthink it. You just did the homework on it. What was your slope formula from last time? There you go, changing y over changing x, your old slope formula. So I know two points. I can calculate the slope there. So the difference is I was given slope here and here. Well, if I'm not given the slope, I'll go find it. Need slope. So I'm going to say 0 minus negative 3 over 4 minus negative 2. So I did that change in y over change in x. That's not new to us. We're just having to bring something in that we did before. Let's see. So this would give me then 3, 6, which is 1 half. So there's my slope. All right, so to use my point slope form, I need a point and a slope. Well, I have a slope now the half, now I need to use a point. <clears throat> I actually have two points on the line. I have negative 2, negative 3, and 4, 0. It does not matter which point you use, you'll get the same answer. Okay? For me, I'll usually pick the one that has the 0 in it because sometimes it gives me less work. Uh, if I don't have one with a 0, Maybe I've got one with negatives and one with positives. I'll usually pick the positives just because I know I'll make mistakes on the negatives. You know, go with whichever one looks easier. You're going to get the same answer in the end. Okay. So here I'd have, I'm going to go with the 4, 0. So I'd have y minus 0. There's my half slope, x minus 4. 
That's correct. If I distribute the half, y would be 1 half x minus 2. It's a slope intercept form. I could bring the half x over if I wanted x on one side. I could do some different things there. What we do want to realize is some other forms. And we pay a lot of attention in here to other forms because that's usually what confuses us. Okay? We start seeing something different. So we're taking what you've done in the past a little step further of, hey, you know what? I can put stuff in and find an equation. Right? Can you manipulate the forms? I got distributed. I brought the half over. That's a good answer. I could also make this x minus 2y equals positive 4 by multiplying everything by negative two. So think back to when, well, we solved equations. Remember we cleared out fractions? You can multiply everything by the common denominator. It gets rid of the fraction. Same thing's happening on an equation. If I multiply everything by negative two, I get a positive x, a negative two y, and a negative two times negative two is positive four. So again, it's that comfort level working with the different forms. That's bringing back some things we've done before. Last class, we did slope. When do we get rid of a fraction? I don't remember, two weeks ago? Get rid of those fractions. Those same things keep coming back. Now, just to show you, this used the 4, 0. If I were to write this with the negative 2, negative 3, and you don't need to write this, and up to you, right? it would look like that. I use my negative 2, negative 3 points, still slopes a half. So these two forms, yeah, they look very different because I used a different point. They will still translate down to the same slope intercept form or standard form. That wouldn't change. So if I distribute this, y plus 3 is 1 half x plus 1, move my 2 over. Excuse me, move my 3 over, and I'll get negative 2, and we're back to the same thing. So the point slope form will look a little different, but not when you work it down to those other forms. They'll end up being the same when things are simplified. It does not matter which point you use. Again, go with that easiest point. Is that looking okay with everybody? Okay this. Let's go. Let's go through. Zero, zero. And four, seven. Got two points. I'm back to needing to calculate the slope. Right over here. I need my slope. So m would be 7 minus 0 over 4 minus 0. So 7 fourths. Fractional slope, that's fine. Now, which point would be easiest to use for you? 0, 0, or 4, 7? 0, 0. I don't do much work with zeros, right? Not too bad there. Set up y minus 0, 7 fourths, x minus 0. I mean, that's my setup. I know the zeros aren't going to change anything, but I'm still going through to that point slope form. So I would have y equals 7 fourths x. I wouldn't have a plus or minus anything just simply because I wouldn't need it for that piece. So we've got to make sure that we get that slope and whichever point we're using. Everybody okay with that? Okay, let's get to your assignment then.